Hey everybody, this thing will show you how to access advanced options on a HP computer's BIOS SEP utility. You know, I've, I've been looking, I've been um, looking around at some stuff online, and I've kind of known about this a little bit of over time, but I've never really experimented with it myself until today. On a side note, here's one of the part systems I'd recently acquired from the um, grid store. I did, uh, the video has been up on YouTube for quite a while, but um. I have upgraded the CPU in this guy to a Core 2 Quad Q6600. Dropped right in, no problem. Despite HP's um, <laughs> support online saying it well, didn't have listed as a compatible processor, um, it works just fine. Ordering 4 gigs of RAM for it and probably a bigger hard drive and may put one of 7 on this guy. Make it a nice machine to sell. But anyways, let's go and show you how to access that utility. Now, of course, there's no hard drive in this machine right now. I haven't installed one yet. Not sure what I'm going to put in this yet. I may order a bigger one for it. I don't know just yet. Anyways. Now, of course, if you just, if you just go into a SEP utility like this by pressing F10, you'll get the common screen that has, you know, some options, but not, you know, a whole, whole lot. There's no optical drive or hard drive installed in this guy. The date and time is incorrect. I may have to replace the CMOS battery on this one. But, um, as you can see, pretty basic affair of options here. Especially in advanced. I mean, you, you have, of course, you know, some information listed here, such as the CPU, which is a Core 2 Quad Q6600. <laughs> that was up from a Pentium dual core that this thing came with. This was the system that had that real crappy Kintec power supply in it when I got it. Anyways, you, you, you get some information here. I mean, some options. There's a look at power. Roughly three options there. Boot. Now let's go ahead and just exit. Now, basically, to get into the advanced SEP utility, you press Control and F10, and then Control F11. It may take a couple of tries, but usually you can get in. And I'm going to show you what kind of extra options you'll get here by doing this. Now, your com your HP computer it may vary, and this may also work on other brands of computers, OEM systems anyway. Like I mentioned, I'm kind of new to experiment with this. I'm just going making going ahead and making a video about it. Say yes. Now. Control F10, Control F11. Now, as you saw, it said it was entering the SEP utility. Now, here's the here's the main screen, which looks, I think, the same as it did before. Okay, I'm about to try this again. You know. had to get it pretty early, I do believe. Okay, I have to keep trying. Yeah, control F10, then Control F11. There we go. Notice how the advanced screen is much bigger. Look here, it even, it even shows you the uh, multiplier of the CPU here. And the um, PCI Express multiplier, which is only uh, 16 times. Onboard video memory size. And you have some options that were here before. We have a Subsys ID and hardware monitor. Here you can see the um, processor temperature, which is 50 degrees Celsius. And I can verify that it's getting plenty of heat out to the cooler. The heat sink is like burning hot to the touch. So let's say if you wanted to um, actually increase the you know the smart fan tolerance you can do it here. And I'm sure some of you guys who have worked with HP systems with their motherboards sometimes they like to um, 
to um, check to see if both fans are working and actually prevent you from getting into this. You know, they'll if one fan appears to be stalled or if the fan works but does not um, appear to be working to the motherboard, it'll tell you it's not working and it'll automatically shut down. You can disable that here. Look here. You can enable and disable these two guys here. This is something H HP probably does when they configure their systems. Because these motherboards get used in a wide variety of builds. Some of them having rear exhaust fans, some of them not. This one did not. Though I am going to put one in it. You can change the idle fan voltage, which I'm going to change that to, let's see, 5.5. I'm going to turn this up to 55. Which for some reason is not letting me, um, hang on. Full speed, set that to manual. Now we can change this to, like, let's say, 64, which at <laughs> 68 was pretty high. Now, of course, Intel CPUs tend to run hotter. I mean, this can accept hotter running environments than AMDs. A lot of newer AMDs don't like to run over 62 degrees C, while like let's say the Core i7s and whatnot can run up to like 80 degrees Celsius okay. But anyways you can you can customize the smart fan settings here. Now mind you this is just a, one of my previous part systems. It's not a custom build it's just an OEM system. You can it gives you more options here in the advance. So anyways, you saw that I have changed some settings here. Let's go back. Now look here at power settings. We have more options here. I don't think boot has really changed any at all. But you get more options here in advanced. Which allows you to fine tune your system a little more. So anyways. Go ahead and exit and save changes. Now I'll just press F10 to get the regular setup utility. So as you can see, there's the standard setup utility again. Has less options than before. Especially in these two sections, power, you see advanced and power. But anyways, that's how you can access the advanced options on your HP's motherboard in the SEP utility. So anyways, any questions or comments? Feel free to ask and thanks for watching.